Every community in America has proud, hard-working people that for a variety of reasons find themselves unable to feed their family. Let me share a couple of typical scenarios with you. After eight months of having lost his job, Gary, whose home is in foreclosure, felt ashamed and ill-equipped to provide for his family. Janice is a single mom with two kids. She had a temporary cutback in the hours of one of her jobs. Suddenly she's faced with an impossible situation. Do I pay the rent or do I feed my family? An elderly couple in their 80s being cared for by their 50-year-old son had the unfortunate occasion of their, their home burning down. Everything was destroyed. The landlord kept the money. And when they replaced their home, their fixed income was barely enough to cover the rental, and there was nothing left for household goods or food. Vanessa and her two children were abandoned by the husband, and she was left with no job, no income, and no ready, readily available ability to provide for her family. So scenarios like this are unfortunately too common. And help for scenarios just like those usually come in the form of a handout. It's a bag or a box of pre-sorted food. It's clothing sometimes used. It's toys that children often wouldn't choose for themselves. And so this idea of dignity becomes really important. If families are not provided choice, by definition, the experience is humiliating, it's embarrassing, and it robs them of their dignity and takes away hope. So I'd like to share another alternative way of giving. Martin Luther King reminded us that it's a high calling to take care of those around us. And I think it's important. The public appearance of the Unity Shop in Santa Barbara, California may not look at all like what you're about to see or what to, you're about to experience. We have a little gift shop. This is our public interface. It's the only part that's actually open to the public. It's, a, it's an alternative source of revenue for us, which is another important ingredient as you think about nonprofits and sustainability for agencies that are trying to take care of the poor. And please realize these are real people with real needs. It's not us and them, we and they, it's all us. Circumstances could change for any one of us and we'd find ourselves possibly in need. So the client check-in office at the Unity Shop is the Black Pearl Pirate Ship. Now I can tell you that these families are not going to Disneyland. They're not having a great time. Life is not treating them very well. So a little low-grade entertainment is not a bad thing. So we have a little train that runs around overhead, and we've got the Black Pearl Pirate Ship. So they're qualified. They bring documentation, uh, rent receipts, pay stubs, birth certificates on every member of the family, documentation on other aid that they're receiving. We're in control of the aid and the services that we provide, but we qualify these uh, individuals to try to eliminate duplication and so more families can be assisted. So the Black Pearl Pirate Ship, we've got the mast, the rigging, the cannons, the ship's wheel, the whole thing. It's great fun. The man who owns all the, owned all the McDonald's franchise in Santa Barbara was the Herb Peterson, a great guy, invented the Egg McMuffin. We owe a lot to Herb. Uh, he was a, do, a volunteer at the Unity Shop, he and his wife, for over 30 years before he passed away. And he donated Ronald McDonald a uh, fiberglass model sitting on a park bench in our check-in area. If you come through the Pirate's Cove before you check in at the Pirate Ship, you get, the kids get to enjoy Ronald McDonald, and uh, it brings a little joy to a difficult situation. 
Each family, once qualified, gets assigned a volunteer or a staff person and they're given a shopping cart. So now all of a sudden, it's back to choice. Now a shopping cart is a simple thing you would think, but traditionally the way food is distributed, uh, the bag or the box that I mentioned earlier, surveys in 2005 indicated that about 70% of food distributed that way is set aside, discarded, thrown away. It's not malicious. It just isn't what they would choose for themselves any more than if I went shopping for any one of you and said, let me do it for you. Really, you're going to love it. You won't love it. It wouldn't be at all what you would pick out for yourself. So it's only a small amount that's relevant. The other thing about the shopping cart is you watch the families go through the Unity shop. They're tugging on mom's purse or, or skirt saying, oh, mommy, can I have this? Can I have that? Who's in charge? It's the parents. The Unity shop reinforces the family unit strengthens the family and puts the parents back in charge, almost making them heroes in the eyes of their children, which is important. Here's the soup section. It's the fire department. If you look closely, you see our child care facility there on the left. Each food section is, is this is the magical village of Unityville. And so they come through and they're having fun. This, this, uh, this shows a lot of food. Uh, number one staple happens to be peanut butter. It's not a bad thing. Uh, our shelves right now, we're struggling to get enough food. That is the challenge for most agencies that do what we do around the country. Uh, we're more of a full service than many, as you'll see. And so this is a little bit about what it looks like in the village. Number two staple is box cereal. Not too unhealthy, but it's needed. You see uh, the bank of Unityville. It's a donor wall. So we acknowledge the banks that help us and the people that donate to us. The kids have no idea what that is. That's just the bank. They're driving their shopping cart in the bank and getting vegetables. We put vegetables in there because they're green. <laughs> and we have copper colored yams and golden corn in the bank. Okay, so then you have the, the Old West General Store bean department, bag beans, canned beans. And when you watch the families go through, it's a magical, magical experience. Some of these kids are uh, incredibly hungry and it's, it's gratifying and fulfilling to see what happens. We have 1,800 volunteers on an annual basis right now. Many kids getting school supply, I mean, I mean credit for uh, community service hours to graduate from school. But we also have team building with companies, a chance for people to kind of get their hands dirty where in fact they're donating so that it completes the loop. They see where their money is going and it really helps a lot. These are some interns from France that we've had for the last, uh, an organization for the last several years. But we have uh, volunteers that, that have a wonderful experience with job training. Job training provides uh, a little resume help and we can do things like inventory control, barcoding experience, Merchandising, the volunteers do all the merchandising. Customer service, they take all the customers through. They can learn office skills, uh, scanning the barcodes. We, in the retail store, we can train them. We have an opportunity to expand that and formalize that for job training for the number of kids that's now 30% and, and growing that will not go on to higher education and have a useful work ethic and behavioral job experience with some concrete uh, job skills included. So that's the food section. And when you move on through the arches and you're now into the toddler area, toddler preschool and baby area, if you're a new mom and you need diapers, if you need clothing, they're outgrowing it about every five minutes, it's important to have a resource if you're struggling. We're trying to protect the home environment, the apartment, the little shared home. We say we'll provide everything above that until you get back on your feet. It's temporary help. It's a safety net, and it makes all the difference in the world. There's the boys' department. We have wooden toys being made by about 26 guys in an adult ed woodworking class, 700 handmade wooden toys every year. It's magical. The, the girls' uh, clothing, school clothes primarily, and uh, school supplies, it's, uh, it's all of the basic needs for the family. When they come through to check out, uh, the kids have no idea that the parents aren't paying. It's free of charge. But it feels like a normal shopping experience. That's the shop part of Unity. What Unity stands for is we have 300 referring agencies in the county. This makes so much sense. People can send them to the Unity shop when they find out they're in need. It could just be a nurse or a teacher at a school. 
They're working with the kids. They can find out the family's in trouble. Could be a hospital, could be counseling. It could be food stamps, Department of Social Services, aid to families with dependent children. They send them to the Unity Shop. It's brilliant and it works. It's a unique referring agency uh, network that I'm not sure we've seen any place else in America. It makes so much sense. Santa's Toy Shop becomes real during the holidays. We'll have between 3,000 and 3,500 families that come to us between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we're open six days a week until nine o'clock at night, straight through Christmas Eve. It is joy personified. If you want to experience the true joy of the holiday season uh, and you need an excuse to come to Santa Barbara, just jump in your car and come down to see the Unity Shop. It's absolutely magical. The kids uh, are coming there. There's no, there's no babysitting and childcare for a lot of these families. So the kids come and they're actually uh, choosing their own holiday gifts. I don't know what happened to Santa in that, that regard, but uh, bottom line is joy personified. To watch the kids go through and pick out things for themselves, it's just, uh, it's wild. This is the senior department, senior resource center. These are for people that are in board and care facilities. Uh, could be convalescent hospitals, could be handicapped, could be artificial kidney center, cancer centers. Low income, they don't have extended family and they're the ones who should be providing for them. And so their caregiver will send us a list of the items that they need, along with their size, color preference, style, condition. Could be blind, could be wheelchair bound, could be diabetic. Uh, whatever the condition is, we get the list of what they need. It's a short list of three items. We'll put those things in a gift box, size, color, style, little candy, little stuffed animal, gift wrap, and we deliver about 6,000 of those every year. And it's personalized, specific, what they need. It's not a generic box that few things that they need. So this is really important and it meets a need. You're back to joy again. And it's a, it's a segment of our community that, that we need to not overlook. Here's some of the, uh, the gift boxes uh, at Christmas time. It is uh, Santa's workshop with all of the people gift wrapping about 3,000 boxes just during the holidays. We can't turn the children loose doing gift wrapping. You can imagine what that would do. And the male side of the species isn't much better. So we have to have some mature females to do uh, the 3,000 gift boxes. Magical place. Another program at the Unity Shop called Job Smart. This is professional clothing for people who are getting into the workplace, trying to get a better job or get a job in the first place. Broken homes, now the wife needs to get a job. Drug and alcohol recovery programs, people have lost everything, they're trying to get back on their feet. We give them professional clothing for an interview or a, an appointment, tips on taking an interview, some resume help. If they get the job, we give them a couple more outfits to get them started. If they need furniture for their home, if they need food for a while, pretty quick they're self-sustaining, contributing back to society and they're no longer uh, in need. This is the inside of the gift shop. We can do some volunteer training in there. It's a magical place, uh, very reasonably priced things that uh, is a, an appropriate interface with the public. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's an important part of the Unity Shop Enclave, trying to figure out how to support ourselves so that we're not always trying to have all of our revenue come from foundations, individuals, and businesses. We don't get any government funding, and uh, that's for many reasons, and it's most of them good. It's one of our fleet of trucks, one of our employees with a load of inventory. The warehouse is where we do all the barcoding. In order to get an audit, we have to keep track of every item, every can of soup, and every donated item, and so we have to generate our own barcodes on every item, and we train the volunteers on how to do that valuable resource. Because we take care of families in crisis every day, it's not a big deal for us to be the go-to agency in case of a fire, an earthquake, a tsunami, or a disaster of any kind. And so we're the go-to people. Our disaster and long-term recovery process for the Unity Shop is vitally important as well. And uh, we're the lead agency in, in the in-kind department for the local volunteer organizations active in disasters. There's room for a lot of people in the community. If you have a good idea and it's well done, you will attract people that'll help. This year we'll have a, a 26th annual motorcycle toy run. The price of admission is a new toy and uh, the guys at a 25 bucks, I think it is. And we had 600 motorcycles last year 
And uh, they usually buy the biggest stuffed animals known to man, put them on the motorcycles and have a great time. Because people want to help. Good, good hearted people will want to be a part of something well done and good. Here's the Porsche Club of North America. They donated about $9,000 to us. And every year now they're doing, they're doing a little toy drive. Can't tell you how long it took to put that tree in the back of that Porsche convertible. Uh, Guys who do bicycles. We love handing out bicycles to kids, but we're, it, you have to be selective. Not every kid wants one, not every parent wants their child to have a bicycle. Giving is a little bit more complicated than you might ex imagine. We've learned some ways to do it, a whole lot of ways not to do it. And so the model at the Unity Shop is pretty well thought out. And uh, here's some of the staff. There's Barbara Tellison. She's been there for 40 years at the Unity Shop. And she basically took it year round having an agency that started in 1917. I've been there the whole time. So, Mr. William Shakespeare says, so shines a good deed in a weary world. A creative idea, well done, can attract people and meet needs in a very, very unique way. And so the Unity Shop, we feel, is a prototype. It requires good people. The corporate culture around the Unity Shop is wild, like nothing I've ever experienced. I've been there 10 and a half years, I'm a new kid. We have one person 40 years old, 40 years as an employee. Three people 25 years, some in the 15 year range, and then a few brand new people about four years. It's an amazing operation that attracts people with good hearts that are committed and devoted to doing a good job. Assuming you can find good people, this is a prototype that is a platform scalable and replicatable in every community in America. We'd love to be a part of that process. I think it's something to be included, thought about in terms of the next generation of cities. It's an it's a institute in Santa Barbara, California. I invite you all to come down and see it, be a part of what goes on at the Unity Shop. It's, uh, it's not... Uh, it's not a black art, it's mystical, it's magical, it's fun, it's creative, and it's a good thing. So God bless you, thank you for listening today, and uh, hopefully as we, as we contemplate what the next generation of cities look like and where we go as a future, we don't overlook the fact that the invisible folks, those sometimes without a voice, just under the surface, just under the radar, that are sometimes overlooked and disregarded, can be taken care of in a very positive way, in a safety net, that puts them back on their feet, self-sustaining, contributing back to society, and not a drain. Thank you all. God bless you.